angry guy here. And white men are warning black men about white women. Guys, if you're enjoying this content, please help get the channel to 100,000 subscribers on our journey to 2 million by subscribing to the channel, liking the video, and turning on notifications to never miss another video ever again. Now let's begin. So white men are warning black men about white women. I want to jump into this comment that I received from one of my subscribers. And it's quite interesting because basically as a result of the manosphere, men are now comparing notes. So this is a white guy. And like I told you, not all chads are white and not all Tyrones are black. This is a white guy who said, I had a brief glimmer of hope to be a chad or a Tyrone. So basically to be a pretty boy that women wanted to fiend over or to be a thug. But I was 17 and wrestled varsity in high school all four years, meaning he had structure. After high school, I just went to work and women didn't really want me, but I had a Japanese girlfriend. I ended up going in the Marine Corps at the age of 24 to 31, and even then the only women I could get had kids. I guess I was a security blanket, because the women knew I got paid on the 1st and the 15th. Terrible. Now at 38, the only women that even talk to me have kids. I cannot get a woman who has no kids. I just work on my mobile home, cook good food, and drink beer when I drink. Crazy women are fun for a brief time, but I enjoy my peace. I cannot speak on black women. I never dated one. All I ever dated or married was Asians or white women. Black women, correction, black men want white women. And I laugh because white women are entitled and it's bad. So enjoy. <laughs> oh, freak. Oh, freak. White women are entitled and it's bad. So enjoy that. <laughs> Oh, freak, oh, freak, oh, freak, oh, freak, oh, freak. I don't really entertain a black woman because I heard the attitude is bad. I would date a black woman, but, it, but it's never happened. I'm more focused on Asian women or Hispanic women. But if I can't get that, I'm perfectly happy, single, and at peace. Now, I want to tell you guys something that's very interesting. Most black women only date black men in the United States. It's a very, very strange thing in America. And I'll, I, it's, it's more pronounced in America than in any other country, more so than in even Africa. It's really, really strange. For example, if given the opportunity, many African women will marry outside of their ethnicity. Okay, They're not strictly looking typically just to marry a man who's black, uh, they're looking for a man who can provide for them and protect them, which is why I've said that a lot of white guys are going to be going, leaving Western society and going over to Africa and getting African women, among others. However, it's strange, for example, if you, if you go to the UK, you'll find couples where, you know, you'll have black women who it's normal for them to date white men and vice versa. You go to even Canada, it's, it's even in Canada, it's different. But in the United States, it is very, it's locked in where black women predominantly only want to date black men. But the thing is that the kinds of men that they are dating are only, are mainly only thugs. So these women only want thugs. They want thugs. And then after after they've dated thugs, then they want to look for black men that have their lives together to raise the th to raise the children of Tyrone. And that's why you have Tyrone attacking, well, Pookie, attacking the passport bros, passport kings, because these men are no longer going to subsidize 
they're living anymore. They're not going to take care of those children anymore. And the government is going to start coming after these men because a lot of these men aren't paying child support. A lot of these men, they go out, they get, they get these women pregnant. Sometimes, a lot of times, these men, they don't even give a real name. This is a trick that a lot of these pookies use. They run around and they don't even, the, the woman doesn't actually know their name. So if the woman doesn't know his real name, she can't identify him. And if she can't identify him, like he can say that his name, he can say that his name is Blake Foster. 100%. He can say his name is Blake Foster. She writes Blake Foster on the birth certificate. And guess what? This man, his name is not Blake Foster. His name is something else. So now, so now, you know, they, the state cannot come after him for child support. Think about the logistics of this, all right? And she doesn't even know where to find this man. So in some cases, you know, so what, so what ends up happening? And even if she sees him, what's she going to do? Call the police and tell them to go and search for him? You know, put his face on a flyer? No, she has to go and find a step-up dad. So she has to find a black man with his life together that she could fool into providing for these children. As you can see, it's crazy, but... In most cases, like if you look at women like Candace Owens, Candace Owens is not the most beautiful woman in the world. But the thing is that she's not in the streets. And the fact is, because she's not in the streets, that makes her very, very appealing to most men today, including white men. So in a country like the United States, for example, where you it's predominant where the it's predominantly white men, white males. If you have a woman like Candace Owens, you're going to have a lot of men that are going to rush in, regardless of ethnicity, to scoop her up. Because women like her are so rare today in Western society. It's frightening. But one thing that I, I've said is truly frightening is the fact that so many black women only want to date black men. But when I say black men, they because think about it. They call these men the, the passport kings. They say that these are men who are unloved and unwanted. They call these men dusties. So which black, but yet they're only dating black men. So if they're only dating black men, then which black men are we talking about? They're talking about thugs. They're talking about Tyrone, Ray Ray, Pookie, Poncho, Little Poncho. He's not a, Pon, Little Poncho is a Hispanic man. But Little Poncho is a, is a staple in the black community. And if you think that Little Poncho isn't helping to feed the incest crisis in the black community, you need to think again. You really need to think again. Like, that's like, we don't talk about the, I, did, I didn't know about it. Because, guys, I did not know a lot about African-American culture. I knew nothing about African-American culture. I, you know, African-Americans were always an enigma to me. To be very honest with you, it was only when I got older and just in, in, in my in my late 30s, I started to learn more about African-Americans. I did not know much about them. I didn't know much about their culture, how they lived, about, the, about I, and I all thought they were very much the same. I did not know what was happening to black men. I didn't know that. I, I did. I just never knew that you had these men. These, these terrible, terrible, awful men that had been destroyed these communities. You know, the, the Pookies and the Ray Rays, you know, and, and my little Poncho. I didn't know about these men until I, until I got into the manosphere. I'll be straight with you. I was very ignorant to it. I thought all black guys were the same. I had, you know, I, for the most part, I thought that I had met some decent black guys, but usually those guys were the type of guys that, you know, they didn't hang around certain other kinds of guys, you know, so like, for example, when I was in college, there was this really cool African-American guy, but you know, you look at the kinds of people he hung around, he didn't have many black friends or any black friends. And it just, you know, so it's kind of like you start thinking that, well, he's just kind of like the exception to the standard. Little did I know that a lot of these men, there's a lot of decent black men in America the problem is, is that they're overshadowed by the lowest denominator, the Tyrones, the Ray Rays, and the Pookies. And these are the men who have destroyed these communities in conjunction with Keisha. As you guys can see, though, the manosphere has resulted in men comparing notes, men of all different backgrounds. 
And as a result of that, men are getting together right now. And here you have a white man that's stepping up like, listen, listen, black men, you know, I see y'all out here running around with these white girls. And if you want them, that's fine. You know, go and enjoy it. But you get what you deserve because you're out here thinking that you're going to get a better deal with, 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 with Felicia than Keisha. And you don't understand. Felicia is just as, is just as entitled. And she will mess your life up in, in, in very similar ways. These are the same women that are crying in, in Florida right now because they're getting cut, cut off from lifetime alimony. I'm going to be honest with y'all. All I, the only women I ever dated were white before I went overseas. After I went overseas, I, I just, I'm not going to lie to you. After I went overseas, I just, I, I was like, I was literally laughing about it. I could not, uh, I said, no, that was it for me. Like, nope, I'm not, I'm not, I, I guys, I, it's hard to put it this way. There used to be a guy named I Am Serious, and this guy was like a white guy, blonde hair, blue eyes. And he talked, he told me years ago, like he was living in Indonesia. And after he moved to Indonesia and he basically only dealt with, with Asian women, he said that he no longer could even get a, you know, he said that his uh his member could no longer even get, you know, get an arousal for for Caucasian women. And you thought I thought it was a joke, and then I went overseas, and uh that was the end of it. And like for me, like it was, it came to like, it was, it was really bad. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. It was really bad with me where like, I just like, even the smell, like, it, like even the smell of foreign women and, uh, you know, even the smell of foreign women and American women is different. And men, men who've like been in relationships with women from, you know, with foreign women, they can often attest to this. You know, like the smell is, it's just, it's very different. Like there's a, once you're in a relationship with a foreign woman and like their hygiene, especially with foreign women who just have like superior hygiene, it's just, it's like these women can just, it's, it's even without soap, these women can, can, I don't know. These women, these foreign women, even without, they don't need, they don't need special soap. They don't need, they don't need perfumes. They don't need any of that stuff. I'm just like straight up telling you, they don't need any of that stuff and they don't have body odor. That most of them, I'm not saying every single one, but most of them, like you'll be with them and they don't have this, they do not have the body odor. Like it's like when I used to deal with American women and like there was the body, there was always body odor. Sometimes it was noticeable. Sometimes it was not. And a lot of times they wear like this terrible stink smell. They just really stink perfumes. I just call it they stink. The perfumes, they stink. And I can't stand it. And they're so overpowering. And it's like, I don't give a damn about your Britney perfume. And then you'll deal with a foreign woman who's like not wearing any perfume at all. Like just like literally no perfume on her. Like I swear, like I was once with a woman, a foreign woman, and I was smelling her. And I said, oh my gosh, she smells so good. What are you wearing? I swear. She legit just said to me, so bro, bro, bro. Oh my gosh. I was literally floored. I was like, cause I'm like, oh my gosh, she smells so good. What are you wearing? And she says, soap. I'm like, oh my gosh, bro, bro. Like, if that does not tell you how bad it is in America and in Western society, I don't know what will. When these women in overseas, they're big, they're flex, they're, y'all, y'all, they're flexing using soap. They are flexing on American women using soap. Like, what, what, what is that set that you're wearing? What is it called? It's called soap. <laughs> Guys, if you're enjoying this content, help get this channel to 100,000 subscribers on our journey to 2 million by subscribing to the channel if you already have it, liking the video, and turning on notifications to never miss another video ever again. White men are warning black men about white women. I want to know your thoughts regarding everything we discussed here in the video today. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Like the video if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA, men walking away, and cheers.